Welcome back to another episode of Andy's Talk. Today, I'm joined by Ethan Andes, our fearless janitor. How are you, Ethan? Oh, man. You know, just taking out the trash. Speaking of taking out the trash, I really want to talk about what just happened, like, literally 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, I went on my first Facebook Live in, like, four years, maybe? Maybe not that I think long, it was three years. I think it was th- the yeah. last one that you were on was three years. It's been a minute. So that was that was fun. You're a rookie. What what happened? Uh, doing some giveaways, man. Giving stuff to people. So no, tell, tell me what happened. You were in the shop before we went okay. live. And so, rookie mistake. <laughs> I was picking something up, and Braden goes, "Dude, your butt's in the shot. Like move." And so just second nature, I reached around, smacked my butt, and then stood up and walked out of the shot. <laughs> But we were on live, so yeah. yeah. yeah how do you? That, how does that, that make good. you feel? Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess if people really want to know the real side of me, you know, I'm kind of quirky, yeah, kind of fun. There you go. That's the real um, Ethan Andes. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we've had a lot of rain recently. Um. We put out a video yesterday about what to do when it rains. So a lot of times homeowners will watch through our videos um, to make sure that they trust us and that they like us. So I want to have a video on our YouTube page and on the podcast that just talks about rain and what the roofing system does to protect the inside of the house. Because a lot of the times you have these people that have to call, you know, serve pro or any other uh, people that fix all that stuff um, when water gets on their assets under the roof. And that's not fun. And that's not really anything that we do. We, put on roofs to protect the inside of your house. So how long, so let's say there's a house that was built recently, nothing new, and there is a roof leak. How long can that go undetected with it hitting insulation or anything else up there that, because your first initial thing is looking up and seeing yellow spots. Like how long can that go undetected? So there's really like two different types of leak. There's like a direct leak. And usually those happen around roof penetration. So where the pipe boots come through the roof, you're literally cutting a hole in the decking and the shingles and putting a pipe through it. So you put a uh, pipe boot around that, or let's say it's a furnace base or something like that. Usually if those leak, they'll leak pretty quick, um, either after the roof's installed or within the first year or two, you'll know because it'll just start dripping down one of those. It's usually above a bathroom or a furnace room or something like that. Um, or chimneys is the other big one because water will sit there and those will leak pretty fast. But the other one, (laughs) I hate to even see, I call it a seepage leak. So it's, it's nasty. And the reason why it's nasty is because you don't always notice them immediately. Um, very few homeowners that we're aware of climb up in their attic regularly. So that gives it time. Like a seepage leak is like where a nail head will rust in the middle of the roof where the nail, uh, the, the nailer for the crew, he didn't nail it all the way in. Over time, water got in there, it rusted the nail out, it dripped through. And what it'll do is it'll start to rot the decking underneath of the shingles and the underlayment. And that can spread over time to where you have a big soft spot on the roof. And then maybe it just drips a little bit. And if it's got that old, nasty, like little thin insulation, it's kind of like confetti. Um, I think they make it out of like newspapers or whatever old paper they grind up. Um, it'll actually get in that and dry and harden. And the longer it does, this could be years, it will create like a little plate. And then water, when it comes and hits it, it hides it from going all the way through in the house. So you could have leaks in your attic for years and years and years. Um, I actually climbed up in an attic that there was a, it was a long story. It was not a professional roofer. The story was literally an ex-wife's or an ex-husband's, uh, it, it was an ex ex-husband and his buddies on a weekend and the story went the homeowner was telling me about a case of beer was involved and then i'm sitting there and i just inspected the roof um there was no chalk line used like the shingles were all crazy like that it was just it it looked bad it looked really bad the exposure was all wrong um the flashing was all wrong and i climbed in the attic and she had leaks all over the house I think I counted seven. There might have been eight, like, big leak spots. But then when I went down in the house, there was only two leaks in the house. And it was because it had been leaking ever since that was done, probably, like, 10 years ago. And there was just, like, I I think I still have the pictures on my iPad where it was just bowls of hard insulation in the attic. So that kind of a leak, when I showed her the pictures, I mean, she was tripping out. And I'm like, hey, you know, I can do what I can, but this is really misapplication. Yeah. What we talk about is workmanship is kind of a big deal because 
sometimes you don't always notice the leaks. So direct leaks is around penetrations, but then the other one, like there may be a leak in your roof that you may not know about for a really long time. And if it, if it, we're not really in a climate that it, it rains like two or three times a week, most days or most years, like Seattle, Washington, places like that do. Um, if they have a water source, like a crack pipe or something that just drips continuously in the attic, if it's a roof leak and they have like, you'll, you'll start growing mold and mold will keep growing, growing, growing as long as it has a water source. If you don't cut that off and fix that leak, that's when you get in the situations of guys climbing to attics and you have surface mold over everything. Um, they're probably not ventilating the roof correctly and that moisture just stays in there. And that can go on and on and on. So to, the long answer to your question, usually there's two kinds of leaks. There's one you can see immediately and there's one that you don't. Usually the one that you don't see immediately causes more harm in the long run because of uh, additional wood damage that you have to fix as well as insulation we have to suck out and put new in and all that. Well, and you go back to talking about getting in an attic and even seeing that. Uh, we just got a picture from one of our project consultants of a picture in an attic of open just electrical yeah talk a little bit about that because I'll, I'll put the picture up on here for you guys to see but like how important it is for andy's roofing and us to get into the attic when we can at every appointment so this is kind of an electrical lesson but whenever you run wires and then maybe you need to take a wire going this way and splice another wire into this way um, basic electrician speak is we have to put a box a junction box or basically where any it's a junction where anything comes in you have to encapsulate that either in metal or I think they do plastic ones now I'm not I'm not an electrician but you got to cover that because let's say they go and they top off their insulation like we're, we're dabbling in insulation right now but if you top that off you can cover that and it's fine because it's covered well, this situation specifically, they had open electrical where wires were tied in together. I mean, their wire nutting it to, like on the little thing. There was no electrical tape at all. It was bad. And then we got to the side of the house and you've got wires, kind of like those old school ones. Like you've got the porcelain, um, I would go to the guide or the holder and you had a nail in it and the wires were coming right onto it. And then they were going down into the attic with that old, I don't know if it's asbestos covering or what, but like whatever they cover those with that mesh on the actual wire, yeah. mice love to eat that. So you have open electrical lines at old houses that then insulation gets on. And if it's the old kind, if it sparks, I mean, you can burn your house down very quickly and people have no idea. They buy a house, especially younger couple. I remember when you bought your house, that's kind of, how it started the journey for you to come work for us. Um, but I went and inspected it and old electrical, you got boxes, you got, you know, you don't know unless crack you climb in and add it. <laughs> you had crack rafters. I think you had one buys, you had one of them yeah. that like fallen down. That was like the major source of the leak. But yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's, I cannot stress the importance of climbing in attics, but most roofers, they only think about the top portion of the roof. It all comes down to the thorough inspection. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, everything we do is a reflection of me. And so when I was doing inspections for homeowners, like I wanted it to be the best inspection possible. So you blur the lines between what most people think of a roofer is we, we do with shingles and whatever's on the outside of the house. But 50% of that roof is underneath. And... I feel like to give someone the best, like you owe it to them because homeowners don't climb in their attic. Okay. So we've got to be that guy or gal that climbs up there, takes uh, takes time and climbs around the attic, shows them potential hazards. <laughs> and it's not just, I mean, like we get up there, we look at the decking. We want to see if it's a one by eight OSB plywood, you know, three eighths inch plywood, whatever the thickness is and all that other stuff. We want to look at the rafters. Um, I think we told this story previously on a different video about cracked rafters and they didn't have a knee wall. Like we would have never known that if we hadn't done that. And then we carried, I mean, the guys carry up, let's say six bundles and they stack them on the ridge. They had two two by fours in the middle of the ridge that were bowed like that. Yeah. If we had done that, it would have been a major problem. So going with the roofing system, we're talking about seeing it from below and, and above. I think a big part that people don't understand, and we'll talk in, as a homeowner because I didn't know anything about roofing before I came here, like the brand of shingles you use, every roofing company thinks theirs is the best in the world. We think JF is the best in the world. That's why we use them. Absolutely. What There's a house getting built down the street, four or five houses, and I won't say the builder, but – me and my wife looked at them to buy and their new construction. We had 
Dude, a little windstorm last week. A little <laughs> windstorm. It was nothing crazy. There's already missing shingles on there. So how does picking the shingle brand for your roof talk wind, storm, whatever it is, but you want to ha- you want to have a dry house? How does that affect the your house? Like picking the shingle brand. What does that? How does that correlate? So uh, really, that's usually not the first concern with a homeowner. I mean, right now they're putting lipstick on a pig. A lot of these builders are. There's a few good ones in our area, but by and large, a builder like the margins are tight. So when they build a house, they have to shave pennies and then at the end maybe that'll add up to a few extra bucks and on the roofing portion there's a i mean there's there's some really cheap shingles out there and one of the major brands that they use a lot around here is in a class action lawsuit across the nation a multiple ones actually because they're stamping high wind ratings on their product and then this recently you got a 60 mile per hour gust it's blowing the shingles off okay it's it's horrible and sounds like job security though if they keep using them (laughs) so that i mean that's the rule of thumb in our industry is like we are known as a re-roof roofer and not saying we will never do new construction because i'm looking into that right now but i have standards with what shingles we install and how we install them so like if we do new construction you six nail every shingle you don't four nail every shingle that's a non-negotiable Okay, that that's just an extra peace of mind for a homeowner. And they may never know. That's part of the way that we do things at Andy's Roofing is the homeowner may never know how well we took care of them. And that's just for me, it's peace of mind. We don't have warranty calls later. Like people, you know, it's just the right way to do things. So um, the shingle is, it, it, there's a couple major brands that are out there. There's Owens Corning, um, IKO, Tamco, GAF, CertainTeed. Uh, I think Malarkey's trying to make a comeback in our area. Um, and there may be a couple of ones that I'm, I can't think of off the top of my head. But of all of those, really in our area, I can tell you pros and cons of every single one. Okay, so GAF, like we're a GAF master league contractor. I've done a pros and cons list of every single manufacturer in our area. And there's a lot of things that roofers don't consider. Like they're they're really sold on Owens Corning duration because of the sure nail strip. Well, in our market, if you're in Louisville or Southern Yant, they get the shingles from different plants and those plants use different dye lots and different inks, different granules, whatever it is, and they don't match up. So a lot of times on more of your, um, I wouldn't call it a cheap roofer, but basically somebody that doesn't care about quality as much, Owens Corning is like the go-to choice, all right? And their duration is an amazing shingle. But their charcoal color, which is called onyx black, like it fades faster than any other black that we've ever seen. That's what my in-laws have that. And we just recently noticed that, for, I don't know what color they have, but a portion of the roof had turned green, like a green tint, and the rest of it's like a normal oh, color. Yeah. You can like see a line down it. And only because I work here, I was telling them about like, it's, that's probably from an Ohio plant, and that one's probably from a... Texas plant and different dye lots, whatever it is. So like I know in our market, GAF is the most consistent with their colors. And I appreciate that a lot. And, you know, you've got other things like how much support do you get from the rep in your market? I mean, I've got amazing reps like and there's Owen's scoring rep in our market is actually amazing, too. But I've never heard of somebody getting a claim approved if there's a problem later, if you know what I mean. So. If they only deal in technicalities, I mean, lawyers write these warranties, and if if the if, if the local rep only deals in technicalities, he'll be like, oh, well, this may have voided it here if you have a nail that looks slightly cockeyed, and they're looking for reasons to deny claims. Like, my rep, if there's a question, they just take care of it. And that's what I want to talk about next, too, is like, we're not a company that's like, we've never had a warranty. Things go wrong. Things we have to fix things. Absolutely. So as a homeowner, when you're sitting here and you have three roofing people come in and pitch, what does that warranty look like? We cover ourselves, but you're talking about you have to call and get it fixed. What does that process look like for the homeowner? Like, so it's, it's a bigger conversation because you have to think of it as like, what, what is the motivation of this roofing company? Where are they going? Like I have huge growth goals for the company and like I'm attracting all of these amazing people that want to come work with our company because we have momentum and energy. And whenever you are thinking 20 years down the road, 
you have to look at the things that can pull you backwards. And warranty calls and stuff like that is part of that. I mean, can you imagine start getting a bad reputation from five years ago because every roof that you install leaked? It's just not the right way to do it. So the systems and processes that I've grinded through creating and documenting and all of this stuff is built around the fact that like, if you have a leak from Andy's roofing, like I have an in-house repairs department and they also handle our warranties. And it took me a little while. I mean, I was going out and fixing any kind of issue that a homeowner had. And now we have a department specifically. So these things get fixed ASAP if there ever is an issue. And that's just part of roofing is like, we're not perfect. Do we, I mean, uh, you know, in manufacturing, they call it parts per million, but it's like out of a thousand roofs, we may have two, three leaks. It, it, it's just going to happen because we're installing, I mean, six, I think it's 6,000 or 7,000 nails in a box. We ordered two boxes. You got 14,000 nails that we're installing in somebody's roof. Something could happen. The details with the flashings and stuff like that. I'm not saying that we're perfect, but we have such a low margin of error because that's the way I think about it. You know, like I'm big in supply chain management. So bottlenecks as well as like uh, quality defects yeah. and that kind of stuff. Like when a homeowner has a leak, I don't just want to fix the leak. I want to figure out why it leaked because we don't ever want to have that problem again. It's self-development and continuous improvement within the organization. So like we talk about these leaks, we talk about issues, like if there's that kind of stuff, we never want it to happen again. So our commitment to homeowners is, is just like, we're with you after the roof gets installed. It's such a big deal because you call these companies, I mean, we've got statistics, I could probably think of them or find them very quickly on the internet. But um, the rule of thumb, I think when I started, it was like 12 years ago. Gosh, yeah, 12 years ago now. Like, was 80% of roofers go out of business in two years, and 95% of roofers are gone in five years. Yeah. So, so we're going to be around in our area codes, match our area, right? Absolutely, we're here, man. We're, we're here. Like, it's not just installing roofs. It's if you have a problem later, the company's still in business. We're finalizing our building plans right now. I'm building a big office. Then we're going to be able to attract even more people to help serve even more homeowners. And we're going to be able to grow into other things that we can't do currently, like commercial roofing. Um, we're dabbling in a couple other services and residential that – you know, they're going to be a big deal in the future, but I need extra space yeah. to to host the awesome people that get to work in the industry. Well, from a homeowner who called Andy's Roofing three years ago, I can promise you that you're going to get the best care. Uh, like we did this episode, it's been raining a lot, random rainstorms popping up. So we just wanted to come talk to you guys a little bit more about what it's like. If you do have a leak, it, it, it's okay. We will help you. We'll get it taken care of. Um, you can head over to the website or give us a call. Uh, everything will be linked in the description. If you can, like, share, and subscribe all of our channels so you can see more awesome content like this. And we will see you next time on Andy's Talk. Mm -hmm.